will be governor. Half a day and Merry Christmas Eve, everyone. I'm Tina Chow. And Biba Nota Buena, everyone. I'm Jeff Marsh. So for Guam News Watch. With three election lawsuits now filed in three separate courts over last month's governor's race, it's anybody's guess as to who will be chief by the first week of January. But for now, it's likely to be either Governor-elect Eddie Calvo or outgoing Governor Felix Camacho as a holdover, as provided in the Organic Act of Guam. The district court has remanded gubernatorial contender Carl Gutierrez's election fraud suit to Superior Court. And attorneys are now preparing to argue in Supreme Court whether the election commissioners who certified votes in Calvo's favor were even legally appointed in the first place, whether their election season actions were legal and if not, whether that's enough to prevent Calvo from swearing in. Here's more. Who will be governor come January 3rd? Eddie Calvo or Felix Camacho? And you, know, you talk to any statistician, when you win by nearly 500 votes, I don't care how many times you recount it, uh, the victory is there and the people have decided. Soon the Supreme Court must decide whether to let Calvo take the oath of office or keep Camacho at Adeloupe till the lower or superior court can hear the case that will decide whether to keep or throw out election results that showed Calvo the winner of last month's general election in a victory over Carl Gutierrez. Chief Justice Torres and the High Court could answer who's governor for now, as early as a week from now. And uh, we'll issue a decision shortly. Next Thursday, three Supreme Court justices will hear oral arguments from all three sides to the case. Now that this panel has approved Gutierrez Uggen's request for an expedited hearing, it's up to each side to present its best explanation as to why Calvo's inauguration should proceed as planned or be stayed. Gutierrez attorney Ike Agigi arguing that the election commission board unlawfully acted when members certified election results and signed certificates of election for Calvo and his running mate Ray Tenorio. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oh, yeah. 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 The motion passes. Uh, the results for the November, November 2nd, 2010 general election has been certified. Yes, sir. So right now we're the movement on the transition side of things. So uh, again, we're just moving forward, informing the cabinet, and uh, looking forward to our inauguration January 3rd. Determining whether Calvo actually takes the oath on January 3rd hinges on a question of overarching importance. Were general election results certified by a commission board that obeyed the law or not? Or does it even matter? And I think that is something that, that uh, really the petitioners um, have to then ask, well, is it really necessary that we all spend Christmas and, and every day of next week trying to work out and put the inauguration on hold when it's not going to change the results? Mr. Phillips keeps focusing on this issue of results uh, and, you know, that what we're asking for doesn't change the results of the election, but I think that he misses one critical and important point of whether or not we have a, a, a winner in this election. I don't think that the Guam Election Commission exists for no purpose at all uh, just to sit there and sort of, you know, uh, supervise things and say, okay, well, let's uh, do this, do that. We have to have a board to determine whether or not a candidate was successfully elected to office. There is a question and they're arguing whether they are qualified to sit on the board. That was the accusation or allegation by the petitioners. Even if it is, even at the worst case scenario, and if it doesn't affect the election, then why is it important to stay the inauguration? It may be alleged that the questionable makeup of the board altered the outcome of the election through mismanagement of process, mishandling of ballots, and violations of law, prompting an unending stream of complaints and leaving the unresolved results of a close election for a lower court to decide. Lawsuit or not, the Calvo team is focusing on its administration and has named four more people to head various departments. They are former Senator Joanne Brown, tapped to be the Director of Public Works, Leah Naholova'a for Director of Labor, James Cameron named to lead the Department of Tomorrow Affairs, and Ivan Kanata for the Guam Environmental Protection Agency.